Oh my goodness. Oh, oh wow, look at this. I bet it's in there. I don't know. Wow. Yeah. So what are we making today, Joyce? Well, we're gonna have shrimp double baked potato with crab sauce. That sounds good. Okay. You're gonna need two large baking potatoes. You're gonna need one cup of shrimp cut in small pieces and you're gonna save eight of them out for garnish. One teaspoon of Old Bay, one and a half teaspoons of fine chopped garlic, two, tea two tablespoons of butter, one tablespoon of olive oil, and an eighth cup of wine. That's for the potato. Now for the sauce, you're going to need three quarter cups of crab meat, two teaspoons of chopped sweet red pepper, two teaspoons of fine chopped garlic, or if you don't have garlic, you can use one teaspoon of granulated garlic, quarter teaspoon of salt, eighth teaspoon of white pepper, half teaspoon of Old Bay, a half a teaspoon of granulated onion, four tablespoons of butter, three tablespoons of flour, one and a half cups of milk, plus a quarter cup for mashing the mashed potatoes. And I will show you how we do this. Well, your first step is you're gonna wash your potatoes. They're usually very dirty. So you get, I got this little rag and it just cleans them up really good. That's the one you made? That's the one I made, yeah. Neat little gadget. Yeah, Joyce makes rags. She used to make clothes, now she makes rags. <laughs> <laughs> and you dry your potato off. And because these take a long time, uh, I'll just show you basically how what you do before you put them in the oven to bake. So what you do with it, Patty, make sure you dry it off. Then if you have a nice pick, you just want to stab them down and just push down until it comes down to your cutting board in about three spots. Then you take your, um, your olive oil and just put some on your paper towel and just rub, rub it on the uh, potato. And the potatoes are in the oven. They're actually done. I put them in the toaster oven. What I do, I bake an extra potato because I don't know if anybody, if any of you is out there ever cut open your baked potato and there's this lovely black blob inside the potato so I always have an extra one to uh, have in case that happens. The potato's been in the toaster oven. They've been in there for at least an hour, maybe a little over an hour. So you want to take them out so they start cooling down a little bit. And they're hot. I use the toaster oven because it's only the two of us and it's a lot quicker to bake them in the toaster oven. Next, you're gonna melt butter in your frying pan. And what this will do, once this is melted, you're gonna put all this aside and this butter is gonna go in the potatoes when you uh, take them out and mash them. And this, you want to make sure it's just you don't want this to burn. You don't want your garlic to get brown. Now you're out of your garlic. The Old Bay. You stir that around in there. Smell good. <laughs> Nothing. Oh, garlic. So that is the best smelling stuff ever. And your shrimp. What I do with the shrimp, I cut them in little, little tiny pieces, because they're going to get mashed in with the mashed potatoes. And then I save eight of them out for garnish when you're done. And they're ones we caught in the St. Johns River, right? Right. They've been really great shrimp. There's hardly any veins in them. They're easy to clean. So you get just that little bit of bubble in there. Get that heat turned down so it doesn't burn. I actually raise it up off the burner so it doesn't get too hot. 
And you're going to do this for about a minute and a half till the garlic gets a little soft. Now you're going to add your eighth of a cup of wine. And let that cook down. The wine evaporates a little bit. It's about probably a little less than a minute. Once that cooks down, just add the shrimp. Stir the shrimp in there until they just start turning pink. Almost like a shrimp scampi type of a thing. the burner and just set them aside and she'll come back with them. The next step is you're going to take your butter and put it in your frying pan. You're going to melt that down. I use unsalted butter for everything. Now you're going to add your peppers and your garlic. And saute these for about two minutes until they get soft. And you'll add the old bay, the and your spices in there. Remember to keep it on fairly low heat because garlic has a tendency to really burn fast and it turns brown and then you have to, to me, I start over when it does that. So you just wanna keep it very low. It'll take about two minutes for this to cook. three tablespoons of flour to this mixture and stir that in and take it off the heat and just stir it in get it all blended in there After you've got your flour all mixed in here, you're going to bring it back to the burner. Turn it on. While that's heating, you're going to slowly add your milk. Get that all mixed in there. Doing this and keeps the lumps away. You're going to turn your, your burner on around medium heat. Okay, I've got a half a cup of milk in here, and you just keep stirring that so, that's, uh, so you can get the lumps out of there. Put some more milk in here and just a little bit more heat to the burner. Just slowly combine all that together. I used to get impatient when I used to make stuff like this and then I ended up burning it because I turned the burner up too high. I mean you can do it but you will burn. Smash it down a little bit. Probably going to take a little more milk. But we'll see once it starts boiling, bubbling. Some 
sometimes I'll use a whisk in there. Okay. So you don't get lumpy. What smells good? It's still starting, it's going to start bubbling. I'm going to take just a little bit more milk. Yeah, it smells good. Looks good. Looks like a soup or something, right? Yeah, you could make a soup out of it. I'm going to add some more milk. Still a little too thick. What I do with this, I usually always add more of the flour. And then um, that way I can thin it down instead of going back and try to make it thick again. It's easier to do it that way. They just add more milk to it. This should be just about right. What I'm going to do next is taste this, see if it's got enough salt. Gets it nice and salty. Okay, now it's ready. I think it's boiling. The white pepper gives it a nice little bit of spice of a hot, like hot spice in there. Okay. Now, in, in goes the crab. So St. John's River crabs, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, still need a little bit more milk in there. And you just sort of fold this over. Take a couple scoops of the shrimp. Oh, maybe a quarter of a cup of those out and put them in there. And stir them in. It's still going to need a little bit more milk. Just perfect. Okay, now we can turn off the burner. Stir it right up in there. That's gonna be yummy. It looks good. Like I said, this would go. It looks like something that's done already. Right? Uh, yeah, you could eat it like that. Why this sits, you want to cover it. Put a piece of foil over the pan. You don't want to get a scum on the top of it. Next step is to slice your um, potatoes. Now they're cooled down enough so you don't burn yourself. You slice the top off. Ooh, they're still hot. Like that, you take your top off. Now you're going to scoop this out. Be careful because the steam comes out of there, it's hot.
why this you want to set your oven back up to around 390 so that's starting to get hot because these are going to go back in the oven again Just scoop around all the edges get it out of there Off the lid, take some of it out of there. I'd use a bigger spoon, but I found if you use a bigger spoon, sometimes you split your skin. You want to get as much as you can out of there. Okay. Now you're going to take half a cup of milk and put it in a little saucepan. You want to get this to almost boiling point. So it's all you can see you can see the bubbles in there. So we're going to take that off. These are the carrots for tonight's meal. I'm going to turn those down. So you take your mixer, get the potatoes, start mixing them. Turn it down slow and slowly add the milk. Some more. This was a half a cup of milk I heated up. We want these nice and fluffy. Like whipped cream. Looks like whipped cream. Huh. Now, you'll take your shrimp that you left in your pan. You're going to scoop some of that out with a little bit of the butter. You don't want all the butter in there. Unless you like a lot of butter, you can put that in there. Fold that into the potato mixture. It smells real garlicky. taste test again. Perfect. That is perfect. After we get everything mixed in here, next step is fill the potato. You can see the shrimp aren't quite all the way cooked, so that's the way you want them because they're gonna cook again in here. I just wanna stuff them full. Just fill them 
up nice. Now you're going to take the shrimp that we held out and you're going to stick the push them down in there so they hang out of the side like so stuff them in there okay, and they're going to go back into the toaster oven at 450 degrees for about 10 to 15 minutes or you could stick them under your broiler they're going to go in there for that and then I'll bake for about, about 15 minutes so the mashed potato stuff gets hot again. Okay, those potatoes are done. See how they puff up? turned the burner on a little bit while I was getting the potatoes out and stir this up you want this to be hot too so it didn't get any thicker it's just perfect All right, we're just going to spoon over the potato Well, these potatoes really look good, George. What we got here? Shrimp double baked potato with uh, crab sauce and glazed carrots. We'll give it a try. See how good it it's is. It's hot. It's going to be. Let's see. Maybe this cooled off down yeah, here. Yeah, that dripped down. And that's cool. I know inside that potato's hot. Mm. Really? Mm How's -hmm. that crab sauce? Crab sauce is delicious. Let me get in there. Piss on the potato. Oh, that's hot. Now you guys be careful. Mm, mashed potato is good. Well, if you enjoy our videos, we'd appreciate a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And thanks a lot for watching.